Two days ago, I asked hiring managers on LinkedIn what skills are necessary for them to hire entry-level threat detection engineers or incident response engineers. Here's what they said. All right, so here's the question I asked. I said, questions for hiring managers or folks in hiring positions in my network. If you're hiring an entry-level threat detection or incident response engineer, what skills do you expect them to have? Asking for a video. Let's go ahead and see the first comment here. So this is from Sineth. Uh, let's see what Sineth does. And Sineth is a graduate assistant at this university where he's previously worked in incident response roles as an engineer and other things like that so he definitely has some experience here so let's look at what he said he said it is expected of you as an entry level threat detection or incident response engineer to have a solid understanding of networking principles and to be both proficient in written and verbal communication he also said that the security plus can be beneficial because it covers the fundamentals of cybersecurity, which are necessary for these positions and he also said candidates can exhibit their critical thinking and problem solving abilities and a strong interest in the field to hire managers and then although direct experience is ideal a willingness to learn and a firm grasp of security principles can compensate for a lack of it so this seems like a pretty well balanced answer here so it's basically combining you know these are certifications willingness to learn communication and also just like being able to show like some sort of like desire for it as a way to get into the field and also i like the caveat where he said that although you know prior experience or direct experience is ideal if you're at least willing to learn and try to grasp the concepts it could also be a pathway to getting i think this is more so of like a general sort of advice let's go into the next comment all right the next response is from dakota o'reilly and dakota o'reilly is a vp of cloud engineering and has been in the security industry for quite a while. He's been a principal security engineer and has done a bunch of other security things. So definitely knows what he's talking about here. So he says, oh man, so for the fun of it, I'm going to attempt to answer this with the disclaimer that I'm answering in the context of a detection engineer, leaning him into the engineering aspect of the job and not what people might traditionally consider in a SOC, your tier one or tier two type roles. Also that this person would be expected to be by themselves either. So this is a very specific context here. So his three things would be one, understanding the basic life cycle of a security incident, uh, like a kill chain. And then can you talk me through a real world security incident he thinks this is important for being able to reason about useful detections and real world attack scenarios without creating tons of noise next 200 level will be understanding of the tech stack we're protecting if the company is predominantly cloud you should at least understand how identity works for that cloud provider and the mental model for audit logs for example aws would be cloud drill and versus cloud watch and then he said it would be very difficult to build detections for those environments without it so without actually understanding how identity and audit logging works in these environments and he said 200 level python understanding so can you parse key out of a dictionary and call APIs without handholding. And then huge plus for being able to navigate API and SDK docs here too. Finally, some sort of query language at a basic level. And then popcorn here for all the responses and replies. Now, I think Dakota's response is very, very well outlined here. He has everything that I think also should be required for a detection engineer, especially in the context of what he's talking about, like someone who would be by themselves in a role. So maybe not a lot of support, like you're maybe the sole engineer in a team. I think this is very well balanced and also like kind of mirrors the expectations. I had previously in my role as a detection engineer. I, I think it was very much leaning towards the engineering piece of things because this makes a lot of sense actually because detection engineering is very engineering focused, right? So of course you have to understand the basic security stuff, right? The detection stuff and all of that stuff, but also the systems, which is something I actually emphasize a lot on basically understanding how the system works, how the login works, right? How the telemetry works, because if you don't understand those two things, you're not gonna be able to build actually good detections with high fidelity. So if you don't understand the stack and the telemetry from the stack, it's gonna be hard to do detection engineering. I think you also had another thing for Python, which is extremely important. I think this is going to be something that's going to be very limiting for people who want to get into detection engineering, who don't have some sort of like programming experience, especially with Python. I, I like the way he outlined what he said about, you know, being able to parse keys out of a dictionary and also call APIs without hand holding. I think those things are not like software developer type functions for like writing that kind of code, but it's more so important for you to be able to like use that, those kind of functionalities. Maybe like if you're working with things like uh, Jupyter notebooks, and, like parsing through like, you know, JSON files or whatever the case is or log files, or maybe you have to do like some ad hoc scripting or whatever the case is and then with apis maybe doing some integrations with like different systems that's super super important if you're going to be a detection engineer at least a good detection engineer i think that was a very good point you made there and, and then he said huge plus if you're able to navigate api and sdk sdk docs i think it kind of aligns with like interacting with apis because in order to inter interact with with an api or use like a module or whatever the case is you have to understand how it works and a lot of that is basically wrangling you know docs dealing with docs especially if you're doing integrations or like yeah mainly integrations basically so that's that's like important. And then finally he said something around query languages. I think this is also super important because of course engineering is great and all, but like a lot of engineering in terms of detection stuff involves a lot of analysis. And so understanding SQL, I think it's probably going to be the best bet because that can easily translate to understanding other query languages, whether it's SBL or KQL or whatever the case is. I think SQL is a very good foundational language that would be good for this. And I thought that was, this was a very, very well balanced answer. And I think anyone who wants to be a detection engineer should definitely like look at this and see how they can build those different skills in regards to what Dakota is talking about here.
here. Let's get back to the video. The next response we have here is from Dennis Chow. Let's see who Dennis is. So Dennis is a GSE 288. By the way, the GSE is a very, very highly coveted certification in the cybersecurity field. It's the GX security expert. And it's a very, very like rare certification. So anyone who really has this is like definitely very experienced, has a lot of knowledge. But it does seem like Dennis has worked in various detection engineering roles, as you can see here, done some cloud security, done some security monitor response. He's also been a, a security instructor as well, worked at AWS as a consultant. So a lot of experience, like for a long time, actually, even for various like government agencies as well. So he's definitely been in this field for quite a while and he definitely knows what he's doing. So let's go ahead and see what Dennis's response is in this post. So he says, hi, Day, I need them to have their IT basics hands on and usually some sort of portfolio as proof of their hands on skill sets, which helps with communications as well. I would think entry level for a well rounded analyst in my perspective are the skill equivalents of the GCIA, which is the GX certified intrusion analyst, the GCIH, which is the GX certified intrusion handler or incident handler, sorry, sorry. And then the GCFA, I think the GX certified forensic analyst. Now, of course, this is an opinion that I've taken. Most security entry levels shouldn't be entry as a overall technical profession so they can hit the ground running for day zero. And then he updated to say to include the term skills to save you from reading the thread. All right. So I actually kind of like this answer from Dennis. I think it's also really cool here, like the expectations he has. He starts from IT basics here. So IT basics has like understanding the basics of like IT stuff. I think here, you know, I'm not trying to speak for him, but I think he's probably talking about things like, you know, operating systems, like how computers work in general, like just those basic things. Like, you know, I think maybe some networking stuff as well, just understand the fundamentals, right? But then he goes on to hands-on stuff. This is something I'm a big proponent of. And in regards to this, he said some portfolio as a proof of their hands-on skill set, which helps with communications as well. So I think this is a really, really good one because uh, there's a lot of emphasis on skills and like certifications and all that stuff. But I love the portfolio aspect because you can actually build projects in a home lab or in a cloud environment and show like your ability to detect them. Like you can run simulated attacks or look for specific things within different telemetry and kind of do that as a project and kind of build a portfolio around that, around detecting things, around investigating, you know, systems or trying to like view uh, the most efficient detection mechanisms within different systems, whatever your case is. It doesn't have to be like grand or, you know, like crazy or anything. There are so many projects out there you can do. Like my cybersecurity home lab, you can do that. I have a lot of people in the Discord who are doing that. By the way, if you're not in the Discord yet, definitely join. We're about over 3,700 people there and it's going crazy there. We're talking about cybersecurity, college certifications, and other things too, like resumes, like careers, and even other things too, like bars, anime, fitness, whatever the case is. It's a great place to be in if you're looking to like communicate with other people who are also working towards your cybersecurity goals or helping other people get to their cybersecurity goals. But back to Dennis's point here, I think he also made a very good emphasis here on scale equivalent for these different certifications. And I think we could actually take a look at these certifications. Uh, let's actually take a look at them and see what those skills would be. So this is the GCIA from SAMS and it's the intrusion analyst, like I said. Let's look at what it covers. So it says that and this is the exam. So this is what it covers. It covers advanced IDS concepts, application protocols, uh, TCP and IP fragmentation, more IDS stuff, some rules and network architecture, network forensics and traffic analysis, packet engineering, some traffic analysis tools, TCP, TCP dump filters, UDP and ICMP, Wireshark fundamentals. So this is, this is, I love this because back to what Dennis said here, he said, let's go back to what he said. He said the scale equivalent of these certifications. Now, I think you can definitely get a sort of the scale equivalent of this without actually doing the certification, which is what Dennis was trying to emphasize here by specif specifying the scale of equivalent here. So you can learn something like this from, you know, certifications like the uh, Blue Team Level 1, which is a lot cheaper than, you know, a $10,000 SAN certification. Like the Blue Team Level 1 is going for about $500 plus um, or, you know, a, a CCD from Cyber Defenders, which is going to be burning you about like $800 or the CDSA from Hack the Box, which will run you around like $300 to $400. And you would learn, you know, all these things, you know, maybe not at the level at which you would learn it for SANS because they go really deep, but it's still really good quality material. And there's also like ways you can practice these skills with like stuff like try hack me, you know, labs or like um, hack the box Sherlock's or even by yourself. Like you can actually like dig into these things. For example, like you might think something like say packet engineering or stuff like uh, IP headers might seem like very complex, but you could actually learn this stuff by actually going to Wireshark. Like Wireshark actually breaks down all these different details about the packet that you can look at in, you know, in the Wireshark interface. And you could just learn that from like a Wireshark course or like a Wireshark lab. And, you know, that would basically, basically satisfy the skill level for this without having to pay $10,000 to SANS, right? Now, of course, if you have a company pay for it or you have like a, you have the ability to pay for it, maybe from like military or whatever the case is, definitely go for it. it it's great and it's going to be a great skill booster. But but if you can afford it, there are other affordable options, which I've already mentioned in this video. Let's go ahead and look at the GCIH as well. I'm actually planning on taking this sometime later this year when I have the time. But this looks at detecting covert communications, detecting evasive techniques, detecting exploitation tools, drive-by attacks, 
attacks, endpoint attacking and pivoting, incident response to cyber investigation, memory and malware analysis, network investigations, networked environment attacks, uh, password attacks, post exploitation, ex post exploitation attacks, recon, scanning, SMB web attacks. So this is, this is also stuff you can learn from, again, like the blue team level one, the cyber defenders, they cover a ton of these. The CDS from Impact the Bus actually covers a ton of these as well. So I think, again, like there are more affordable options. There are labs out there that can get you the skill level, but without spending, you know, tens of thousands of dollars for this. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the GCFA as well. And I think it's somewhat of a mix of everything, right? So it's like more so like forensic analysis. So volatile windows, volatile malicious event artifacts, windows, some timeline analysis. Some this is actually really great that I'm seeing this because this stuff I actually learned from the CCD from Cyber Defenders and then a bunch of other stuff here. NTFS analysis, other stuff like this. The Cyber Defenders is very heavy on all of these things right here, right? And it goes for about $800. So you can build those skills without spending like spending like less than 10% of what you spent on this training. Now, again, I'm not, you know, saying like SANS is bad, but it's expensive. So if there are other alternatives you can use to build these skills, like Dennis was saying, I think they're very much worth it. I, I do notice that there was some like sort of like chatter in, in the thread with Dennis. And I feel like there was a misunderstanding, but I think this video I'm, I'm making should definitely help clarify that. I um, mean, also like bring some clarity and some other alternatives to building those skills beyond spending all this money on all these SANS certifications. Again, I'm not against these certifications. I actually do plan on taking this GCIH this year, so I'm not paying for it. So <laughs> that's why I'm taking it. But again, skill, not the actual certification, building the skills around that. Now let's move on to the next response we got. Uh, we got this response from Carlos. Uh, Carlos is a CERT analyst. I believe he's a, yeah, he's a senior analyst um, at the Accenture CERT. Let's see what Carlos says here. Carlos is talking about the level effect detection engineering, zero syllabus, and he thought it was pretty solid so far. Let's take a look at what it has there. By the way, I am familiar with this training course. This course was, I believe, created or originally edited by Talis Jordan, who used to be a community manager at CyberWorks Academy. But I think based off of what I see here, let's take a look at the curriculum, actually. So the curriculum, I don't see what the curriculum is. Okay, this, look like the, this looks like the learning modules here. So it looks like some regex stuff, some Yara and Snort, some Sigma, some log analysis, malware analysis, some attack emulation, some creating testing and tuning detections, detection as code, and some cloud stuff. Now, I think this is really good, uh, detection engineering wise. It says this is the prerequisites for this is the completion of the detection engineering 100 or some one year of experience, one plus years of experience. I think this is good. It definitely covers a lot of really quality material, like, you know, in terms of like detection engineering. It's definitely a lot more focused around like very core detection engineering stuff. I think this is more so going to be directed towards people who have some experience because you can't just go into this stuff without having like some background experience. But it's definitely quality for uh, what it offers at like, the 100 level. I'm also familiar with Talos's work, so he's definitely a great guy. Knows what he's doing, and I'm very sure like you're going to learn a lot from a course like this. All right, let's get back into the comments. So this is a comment from John, and let's see who John is. John is a leader, a security practitioner, and it looks like John is a manager of security engineering at Netscope. He's done some threat and vulnerability stuff, done some more security specialist and operations EDR stuff. Yeah, network analyst, a bunch of other stuff. So he definitely knows what he's talking about. He's been in the industry since 2002. Definitely a lot of experience there and now works at Netscope, which is great. Let's see what he says. He says, good question and happy to help. Thanks for the help, John. For entry level for such a role is first, motivation. Okay. The candidate must be willing to solve a puzzle. I look for activities where they looked for the answer versus waiting for the answer. An alert is the start of a hunt. What is the context behind it and around it? What does weird mean to the individual? Have they shown outside coursework that they can keep tabs on the threat landscape? Do they follow popular cyber blogs and news sites? Everything else can be taught during onboarding. I love this. And I'm a firm believer in building an individual. I've been built on growing a threat team. I support growing talent. I really love John's perspective here. I think it's very, very well balanced. It's a balance between what can they do, what do they have the ability to do, plus what can they learn from what they already have in terms of knowledge. I think it's a very good uh, and newest approach. And I think it's also kind of part of what helped me build my detection engineering career because I did have some experience, but not all the experience. But I love the fact that John says that he's a firm believer in building an individual, given that he has experience building, you know, and growing a uh, talent. But before that, he prefaced that by saying that, are you able to solve a a puzzle, right? Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's not saying maybe like actual like jigsaw puzzle, but like security puzzle, right? You know, like in the context of an alert, like, you know, probably like 
it might even come up in an interview like uh what does weird mean to you like in a you know security alert what would you look for how would you hunt stuff like that um i think these are not things that are incredibly like complex but at the entry level like if you're entry level for this kind of role detection or incident response engineering kind of shows the way you respond kind of shows like you know where your mind is at in terms of like problem solving and you know puzzles and all that stuff and then you know from there you can be built up into a better detection engineer or whatever team you're, you're on so i really love this answer it's very well balanced um very very well nuanced uh, thank you for the response here john and here's a response here from alan i believe alan might have been mentored by john and he said when he started at nescope about two years ago he had a little know-how but a lot of motivation and passion he said it was his first cybersecurity job and provided with mentorship paired with a culture of learning the role turned into an amazing growth opportunity for him and he attributes his approach to security today based on that initial mentoring combined with his own natural curiosity and then he goes ahead to say you can teach methodology and systems but you cannot teach drive and passion that is very well said i don't think i could have put it any way better uh, this is a very well great you know response and <laughs> response under uh john's response i also think it's something i can relate to because i had a similar experience with myself like i had a lot of mentorship in my career coming up and i think that's really helped me like with my approach to security and also like just in addition to my drive and my own curiosity and my own motivation it's a really nice mesh and i think if you're able to show that people are always willing to take a chance on you to help you grow in your security career especially if you show that drive and motivation so i really really love this answer we've got this response from vince i believe vince is a recruiter at amazon he says scripting and then specifically python i think we've already said this with what we saw in dakota's response earlier on uh, obadiah says he's not a hire manager it does seem like he works in threat detection and response but he feels like threat detection engineering is not an entry-level position i actually do agree with this i don't think threat detection engineering or incident response engineering roles are entry-level personally i've been working in a SOC for about two years before i got my first detection engineering job and i think it's good that way because like you need some background knowledge in order for you to like actually understand threat detection right it's very i think it'll be very hard to have to have someone go from like zero to threat detection engineer i don't think it really works that way ex except they're very exceptional but having some background experience with like you know security or like might even be like system administration or network administration whatever the case is i think some background is important because zero to detection engineer is going to be very difficult except you have a lot of experience in something else or you are just like super smart yeah i agree with that it's not really entry level we have a response from jonathan kirby let's see what jonathan kirby does jonathan appears to be a security manager uh it seems like he's also uh done some stuff at the sense institute teaching how security and DevSecOps and other things as well so he's definitely been involved in like security engineering security engineering management and also security education let's see what he says he says first off if i were hiring an entry-level threat detection or external response position it would be an analyst role versus an engineer i love this okay so to me an engineer role implies a higher degree of knowledge skills and ability so not entry level very true as for the skills i'll be looking for i would want them to have either windows or linux administration log analysis troubleshooting and problem solving skills i'd also be interested if they enjoy solving puzzles and are good at identifying anomalies very good answer answer here i think also kind of uh, meshes well with everything we've heard you know earlier on with problem solving some experience with like windows or linux i think it also vary to maybe like if you're doing cloud maybe that cloud experience some log analysis as well so log analysis would be like what you'll be doing as an analyst so if you already have the experience it's much easier to pivot into a detection engineering role and then for problem solving and troubleshooting cannot emphasize this enough i cannot emphasize this enough for being a, an engineer whatever kind of engineer you need to understand how to solve problems and also how to troubleshoot because you're going to be dealing with that a lot so very well newest answer here we're going to answer from constantinos he says honestly none of these positions are truly entry level except you include the l1 suck mdr positions okay i think this uh, makes sense as well i think the general consensus here is that threat detection and instant response engineering roles are not necessarily entry level and i think that's just the truth all right looks like that's all the questions we have i thought this was a really great conversation of course there were some back and forths here and there but i thought everyone who responded had really really great answers and we got a lot of responses from people who actually have a lot of experience in the field and have been doing this for a while hire managers as well i think it was a very well balanced response for everything i think the general consensus again like i said is it's not entry level but some background experience would definitely be very helpful and i've seen this firsthand of myself so i hope this video was helpful in a way to kind of like show you like you know what to expect if you're trying to get into cybersecurity for try detection engineering roles or incident response engineering roles in my past life I've been a detection engineer and i could definitely say it was not necessarily entry level i had some background in security before doing that and i'm currently an incident response engineer and again it's not entry level because i do have some background in security prior to this so i think if you're wanting to go into a role like this definitely want to pursue maybe being an analyst earlier on or just be very exceptional i don't think it's impossible i just think it's going to be very hard if you don't have that background experience but that's it for this video if you want to learn more about other security engineering roles out there like enterprise security and other stuff i'll recommend checking out this video right here and if you want to learn more about some things i wish i knew before getting into cybersecurity engineering like salary 
salaries, expectations, and all that stuff. And even some of my previous salaries before I become an engineer, I'll definitely recommend checking out this other video right here. And that being said, I'll see you over there. Bye-bye.